The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs... The most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hey everyone, this is James from Cave Dweller Music. I am joined by my co-host Brendan. Today we have Oho Malo, the El Paso, Texas sludge, stoner, heavy metal, hard rock band. Uh, they just released a new album called Black Light Fever Tripping. And today we are joined by Steve and Mike. Thanks so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you guys taking the time. Thank you very much for inviting us. Hey, you all. How y'all doing? I hope I pronounced the name correctly. My uh, my Spanish is not the best in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's Ojo Malo. Ojo Malo. Okay, great. There you yeah. go. Um, well, do you want to just tell people a little bit about uh, the band, a little bit about yourselves, what you do in the band, sort of your backgrounds? Uh, yeah, um, this is Steve. I'm the the, the senior of, of the project, and um, we uh, uh, I was in a band for for a while, and I had the fortunate uh, luck to be in a long term band. And I think we lasted like twelve years, uh, and then uh, for whatever reason that I don't want to get into, uh, I I started looking for something that I was more um i i guess more more in tune with and um and 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 i started to uh kind of look for bands that sounded like black sabbath because that is my favorite band and uh, uh, even um even to the point where i named the band brother strange um with a bs to emulate the black sabbath <laughs> because I had read, I had read one time that Ozzy was was ecstatic that in the record bin the Beatles B and the Black Sabbath were in the same bin, and I'm like, well, in homage to my Beatles, which is Black Sabbath, I want to name something that's similar to that. So if something were to happen, you know, my brother Strange would be in the same bin. Anyway, so that's that's how that came along, and and it was a more of a stoner band than than the the heavier stuff that we produced in this last album, and um, uh, we were fortunate to to get uh, Mike in into the project, to the Brother Strange project, and um, as you all well know, as soon as you change one member in a band, the whole dynamic of the band changes, right? And and so he brought a, a a different style, a heaviness to it. So we started to to get a little heavier and sound a little heavier. And 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 in the process, the writing changed as well. And we got heavier. So we decided to drop the Brother Strange, where we, we had about a was it three albums, three three albums, three EPs, and um, and then we uh, changed it to uh, Ojomalo, which. Mike will tell you right now an interesting story about that name, and uh, and it, it the the name fits more of the writing a direction that we're going in, and um, you know so my, Mike's been writing you know the riffs and I've been coming up with the melodies, and 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 the lyrics and putting them together and um, and it's been working out great for us for like the past five years. Yep. Yeah, so we've been we've been writing together for about five years, but this is our first project as a home model. Awesome. Um, when, nice. when you shift when you shifted the name, did everyone come over with you from the band, or was it just some members? Or so so when we when we were we had shifted a few members in Brother Strange, uh, including my son was in the band. He left the band. We got a couple of other guys in, uh, lost our drummer. And when, when we decided that we wanted to change everything, we let the bass player go. We let the drummer go. Um, and that's when we changed the name and decided to start looking for two members that would match what we, what we wanted, you know? Right. And so, you know, we did find them thankfully. And, um, you know, as far, as far as, is, you know, the guitar work is concerned, you know, I came from the punk scene in the eighties. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I played in a punk band, which, you know, no guitar solos, three chords, as fast as you <laughs> can go, you know. And, uh, but, but growing up, I was obsessed with Ace Freely. Okay. All right. 
just obsessed with H. Freely. And, and, you know, and I think what it was was because I, I, I'm not, a, I was never like one of those prodigy guys that was picking up doing these crazy solos and all this kind of stuff. My father was, is a musician, but he's a blues guitar player. Huh. So my solos, I only knew blues. And Ace Freely solos were kind of punk rock, you know, they were all over the place. They weren't great. And I just, I just thought he was the best, you know, and, and like yeah. Steve, you know, I also listened to a lot of Sabbath and Frank Zappa, um, Slayer, you know, I got into all the thrash metal and the death metal and, 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 uh, you know, and then over time it's kind of, so, so with the, the riffing, you know, it's an amalgamation of, of all kinds of stuff. You know, my son, one time he said, dad, your riffs are, are getting groovier and groovier. And I said, shut your mouth. <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me that, you know, like it was a bad, <laughs> you know, and, uh, I, you know, I, it, it was just, you know, just because of where I came from, you know what I mean? Right. I right. just wasn't, I wasn't, you know, uh, the culture wasn't, of that scene. And, yeah, it was different. You know, the punk rock scene isn't about groovy and neither is like the thrash metal scene, you know? Right. And I wasn't a big Pantera guy or anything like that, you know? Um, so, so I just have, I just play what I want to play. You know, I love like Celtic Frost, you know, you'll yes. hear some of that you know, in, 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 in the riffing and, and, you know, all the solos are all Ace Freely pocket solos. That's just what they are. Yeah. Uh, I'm not shy about that, you know, um, at all, but, but, it, you know, you know, the album and the rawness and the liveness, that's all intentional. We, that's what we want. You know what I mean? I don't ever want to put something on record that I can't do live because, you know, that's, that's, that's BS, you know? Right. It's. Uh, yes. I think it's awesome that you had that influence because uh, Brendan will tell you I'm like a massive friggin' Tom G. Warrior nut. Like, uh, I oh, love, yeah. love Celtic Frost and like uh, Tripticon and all every, anything he touches. Really, I'm a fan of. Yeah, you can hear that one in that that song, Terra on the Ferryman." Mm -hmm. That song. I, I never. I, I, I did. I didn't pick it up before, but I'm gonna go back and re-listen now, and I'm sure I'll pick it up. Yeah, that that song came out of my 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 young man's still but still obsession with 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 Celtic Frost. I just I loved them. I loved Hellhammer. Yes, something yeah. about that that riffing that blew my mind. And so when I wrote that song, that was what was in my mind. I said, you know, I'm going to do something that maybe Tom G. Or would have had written. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We we got so lucky last year. We went to uh, Maryland Death Fest. Oh, and, and you got such fun. What was that? Sorry. Who'd you get to see? Well, Tom G. Warrior was there. And yep. not only did he do a full set as Trypticon, but he actually did an entire set as Hellhammer and played all of their songs. Wow. Wow. Only yeah, Death it was, is Real. It was awesome. Ah. Yes, exactly. I was actually wearing that shirt that day. Uh, I had the yeah. demonic raids, with it, and on the back it says, Only Death is Real. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. So, so the other thing that Steve had mentioned, too, was that, you know, the, the name of the band... So, so you said your Spanish wasn't good. So more or less, it means evil eye. Okay. Um, and so the, it came about to when I, when I was 15, I got shot in the head. Wow. By a, by a gangster, like a total guy. And um, shortly after, after, you know, long, long time in the hospital, and I got, finally made it back to, to school, they started calling me Ojo Malo. The Cholos, the gangsters were calling me Ojo Malo, like the, you know, the crazy white guy that has the crooked eyeball, you know. And so, oh. <laughs> as Brother Strange, we wrote a song. We had a song called Ojo Malo. And okay. uh, it just kind of, I don't know, it fell into place and, mm -hmm. and it kind of worked. And we, we kind of were kind of doing a uh, Mesoamerican, Aztec, Mayan, mythological sort of theme, in, partly in our imagery. Um, and that's kind of what, what the logo is and all that kind of stuff, you know. And um yeah, and I would also really quick like to mention our other two members. Our, our drummer is a guy named Matt Wojciechowski, the Polish Hammer. Huh. Uh, he's my cousin, actually. Uh, jazz trained drummer. Um, huh. Just fabulous pounding drummer. Excellent. Our bass player, Oscar uh, Gomez, longtime bass player in El Paso. Just a super badass. Uh, and they both... Uh, have turned us into what we are now, you know what I mean? Have helped. And we're, we're very proud to have both of yeah. those guys with us. That's awesome. So. You guys play really well together, very cohesive sound. So some good chemistry there. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, I, oh yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. It's uh, it, was, it, it gelled really fast with us and, um, and it, it allowed us to 
start quickly writing a little bit faster as well. So yeah, that you know, because some of the times when you're getting new members together, it takes a while to to get the feel for each other. Right. Uh, but this one, this one was so quick and and so fresh and new to us that we just said, "Hey, this is this is it. Let's let's go, Ben." And and uh, it allowed us, like I said, to write a little bit quicker and and uh, you know, um, as I said, we already are more than halfway done with our next EP um, song wise. So, um, you know, absolutely. And, uh, so it was it um way better for you guys like um like starting off a new like everybody just had like a more professional approach to like let's get this done or was it more of a fun atmosphere that just fell together? We kind of do like a brotherhood type thing, right? Yeah, um, the having fun and the enjoying each other's company and laughing, um, enjoying the same styles of music makes it it automatically kind of turns professional, I guess. In, in you know in some way that we we know what we have to do and we do it you know what i mean like right. if, we, if something happens and we can't rehearse for a month and then we a gig pops up everybody knows their their parts we're good to go we don't have to you know it's not like we got to worry about it so right so so it, it, it's it's nice to be in a band where it's not a job you know what i mean it's, it's we enjoy it you know we enjoy the writing process and we like playing and you know we've had We've had a, a great list of bands that we've opened up for that we're pretty happy we have. You know, we've awesome. had a great time. That's who's, awesome. uh, who's some of your favorites you've played with so far? Mm, that's a tough one, man. Well, one of them was Accept. That was cool. Nice. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, the, one, one of my favorite ones was the Max Sadness. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and they sounded just like heavy as hell yeah. and can we say hell on, on this thing you can you say whatever, say you, whatever want. you want <laughs> it, it, it was it was heavy as fuck yeah. and, there you go <laughs> and, and you know you, the, the antics of 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 the ronald mcdonald copying what ozzy does on stage was just hilarious but still heavy as, as hell and, yeah. and uh it was it was a great time but yeah that was i that was one of my favorite ones. I mean, we played with so many, so many bands of the stoner and the doom kind of area. You know, the other night we played with Bong, uh, Beelzebong. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we know them. Yeah, yeah, those guys and 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 uh, Green Beard and. Um, nice. So yeah. on Sunday we we opened for uh, Telekinetic Yeti. Telekinetic Yeti. Oh, awesome! Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. And then in uh, in on August fourth. We're in Albuquerque at the Burke City Rock City Rock Festival, which is going to have bands, you know, Matt Pike versus the Automaton, Weed Eater, uh, awesome. a lot of Bills of Bong again, you know, a big nice. out there. So we're looking forward to that. You know, we we, we want to get out of town more often, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with jobs, Steve's retired, but I'm not retired. I'm a teacher. I still got a little while to go. Yeah. yeah. Bass player is also a teacher. <laughs> He's got a little while to go too. So, you know, it, it, it gets a little tough sometimes, but, you know. Nice. What do you guys teach? I teach United States history. Nice. Right, nice. And our bass player, I believe he teaches government, U.S. Mm -hmm. government. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You guys teach yeah. like both of the things I have degrees in. I did I have a history degree and a political science degree. So there you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah, I teach early U.S. history, like you know, up to the Civil War. Oh, nice. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's great, and uh, you know, it it, it I, my students get to sit and listen to me write songs, man, when they're working. So that's really cool. Yeah, we 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 love it. We have a lot of fun, and and you know, we want to get out of town, you know, but you know, I mean, there's always financial constraints, you know. Yeah, and, of course, man. You no know, record labels, and we got burned real bad a couple years back. Uh, with a record label, not financially burned, but but could have been that way, and you know we got out in time, and and so you know now we're just kind of like we're sending everything out right now, uh, and see what happens, you know. Yeah. See nice. if somebody likes what they hear, and you know. It's only been out, you know, what two weeks, mm -hmm. more or less, and a little over two weeks. And and but we're we're very happy with uh, the attention that it, it has been uh, getting from from uh, from you all, and. Uh, you know, it just motivates us to 
to try our best to continue that that um you know but still making it sound real natural you know and, yeah. and of and, course you know, making it part of it you know music that sounds forced just doesn't interest me yeah you know i, I don't you know. and i not to knock any bands or knock any artists or any genre of music you know there's a reason why i'm not a big fan of like prog rock i can recognize everything about the talent it's just it's Sometimes, sometimes it sounds a little forced to me. We've and- talked about this on our show a lot of times. And like uh, my opinion on this is that just because you're a talented musician doesn't make you a good songwriter. Right. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's a whole nother different monster there. The songwriting part. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, like you can write, you can be like the best guitarist in the world, but if you can't write something that's like memorable, catchy or stands out from everyone else, then no one's going to care. Yeah, right. It's similar to gearheads, you know. I mean, you know, I play out of a, I play out of one of those Bugueras, man. You know, it's like a, 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 I don't know if it's the, I don't know which which PV clone it is, you know. But I don't care, man. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not feel the same way. You know, you can have a ten thousand dollar PRS, but if you can't play it, then what's the point? You know, <laughs> right? You or know? if your songs are really boring, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it sound great, but no one's gonna listen to it. <laughs> Right. I think that's that's the one thing that I really liked about the uh the, the songs that we uh let out is that they're all uh different. Yeah and uh, and which in, in terms will make them memorable, whether it be a good memory or a bad memory, but you know, it, it, it's not like the seventies anymore where you could turn on the radio and you can you can easily identify, oh, that's Aerosmith. Oh, that's yeah. kids. Oh, that's UFO. Nowadays, even in, starting in the mid '80s and up, you know, we have so so much of the same that it it just gets lost in uh, in the feel in the groove and and uh, it, it just uh, it's not a good scene. So we have, we've been working on on our our songs to be uh, cohesive. But still different and memorable, right? And, big. and big, yeah. You know, and and that's that's uh, our biggest um, not not our biggest challenge, but the biggest goal that we always try to achieve when we write or uh, when me and Mike write a song. You know, and the other thing is, I have noticed that a lot of newer music, there's no hook. You know what I mean? There's no, yeah. you know, a chorus like like you know, in the seventies, even in the eighties. You know, I mean, the chorus was. That was the deal, you know. What I mean? I listen to a lot of bands, and you know, we we'll watch we watch bands play a lot and live all the time, and we're going. So when did the when did you know what when did it change? Like, there's you can't you can't distinguish between, you know, a bridge or a hook or a chorus. It's all the same song, you know. And and right. I don't like that. I want to be able to remember a part of a song so I can be excited. Oh shit! Here comes that. Oh part. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like yeah, yep. 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 You know, like, like when you're waiting for Tom Warrior to go, it's hard, you know, you're like, what? But yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and solos. People don't really, a lot of bands don't do solos anymore, I've noticed. There's so many bands where I'm like, there was like two solos on that whole 10 track album. Yep. Well, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be Solo Kingdom, but like, that one per song is some nice. Fucking style, <laughs> bro. Like, fucking rip yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was pretty funny when Steve asked me to, to come over and talk about joining this band. Originally, actually, they just, they asked me if I would be willing to do the studio work, not live stuff. And um, he said, well, once they decided, okay, you want to be in the band? He's like, yeah, but you gotta, you gotta have a solo on every song. And I was like, oh shit. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not used to writing solos. Like I'm a, I'm a rhythm guitar player. You know what I mean? like, right. I, I riff, that's what I've always done is write riffs. That's what I do. And so that that was a, a bit of a challenge just to get used to it. Not not so much um, technically a challenge because I'm not a very technical soloist, so there's that's not an issue. It was right. just getting used to putting solos in when I had never not, wasn't used to doing it, you know. And, uh, right. And I, I always appreciate bands that don't just do the standard guitar solo. Like I like it when you have a band that has like a bass solo or a drum solo as well in yes. the mix. I think that's okay. really cool. Yes, and yeah, yeah. I'm you brought that up. Because our we, our bass player is such a, a dynamic bass player. When we're when we play live, man, he throws in like all kinds of wah and all kinds of crazy shit when he's playing. Awesome, yeah, man. 
yeah, that love uh, I was that was uh, the uh, Grim Reefo, uh, Grim Griefo rising. Like I feel like uh-huh. doesn't that start out with some fucking crazy bass, uh, yep. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he uses awesome. the, the, the power fuzz wah. Yeah. All right. Kind of like the Cliff Burton kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he's a good walker. He's a base walker, man. He can throw in, you know, a little, a little lick. And you know, the cool thing about him is that he, he play. He's he he he's played in a lot of like cover bands over the years, mm-hmm. but that does like seventies, like R and B, and you know, like uh, Steely Dan nice. and stuff. So you know, yes, and those kind of bands. So he's got a lot of experience with different styles, you know, so, of yeah. different players and he kind of blends all that together much like i do which which just it, it complements the hard riffage that i'm doing to have that bass in there kind of like throwing a little bit of a scale here and there and you know it, it's awesome yeah that was actually the first song that i heard of yours uh was the black uh sorry uh grim reefer rising but the two that like i i love the most was uh i think it was Chiron the ferryman and uh black trip lord those like those i had on like repeat mm-hmm. for like a couple of days Oh yeah, Black yeah. So Char- cool. Charon came from. That's the one that was the whole Tom G Warrior thing. Yeah, that's okay. Then. That's why that's I liked the, it. <laughs> there you go. Kind of like into Crips of Rays, you know. Da, da, yeah. da. You know that sort of that style of, of thing. That's kind of what what I wanted out of that one. And then Black Trip came out of. I was listening to um, Electric Funeral. Ah. We used to do it. In the other band, you know, bom, 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 and I was like, God, that is so heavy and so, you know, I want to do something that hits you in the face just immediately, but then right. goes into the groove, you know what I mean? And I'm no. not really sure how it went from that pounding beginning to the that groovy little, you know, verse part, but it works. It does work. And that that song, the chorus is like ridiculously catchy. That's what we want to hear, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's air, airworm gets right in your head. Yeah. Well, um, during uh the black uh trip lord, were you guys like like at the towards the end of the song, right, like or middle of it, right? There's like a, a old piece where you guys like, I don't know, were you outside or like what 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 uh where where did you get that? It's it's actually an old news reel from the fifties about uh an anti marijuana. Uh, FBI film that that that, that we found uh, with, and we took the audio from there. So it, it's kind of just warning the the the, the hipsters of, of the day about, hey, you know, if you get in trouble, you know, just say that you're doing this or whatever. But it, it was it was uh, an anti commercial marijuana commercial uh, from the fifties. We just thought it was hilarious. Cash. Because that, the, the song is about, you know, a, 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 a grim reaper, you know, coming out of your bong, you know, so the, the whole <laughs> thing, the whole thing is about that. And um, irony. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. Where the solo would like, go. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I just, you know, what, and, and the truth of the matter is I could not find a solo that worked with that song. It just didn't work. For me, it was just like. It was too pounding, and it didn't need any lightning with a guitar. Chose to leave it out. Yeah, and that was yeah. Not not every track needs one, but like because uh, sometimes it, it it feels out of place. And same mm-hmm. with uh, same with guests. Like some, you know how like uh, people get guest vocalists and stuff on mm-hmm. on tracks. Sometimes they they make really bizarre choices with that. Um, yep. I, I heard one this week. Have you have you heard of the band um, Code Orange? I have not. Yeah, with Billy Corgan. Yeah, the Billy Corgan one. Oh, His Billy, part makes... So Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins is the guest on on yeah. this track, and like it's like a they say they change sounds constantly. The last album they did sounded a lot like Nine Inch Nails, like really good industrial rock stuff. But then this one, they kind of sound like Lincoln Park, uh, and the tra- oh. the track's actually like catchy. But then Billy Corgan comes in, and his vocals make absolutely no sense whatsoever to the song. I was like, why is this on here? It just it ruined the whole song. Because he's because he's still singing like Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, a hundred percent, exactly like Smashing Pumpkins. So it's like new metal, like alternative metal stuff with like harsher vocals the whole time, and then Billy Corgan singing like Smashing Pumpkins for one verse. That just sounds like a money grab from both ends to me. Hundred percent. Do that with uh, 
Bob Dylan or some shit? I don't know, Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Uh, I yeah. But but I mean still it's you know, you know it, it didn't just, work. You know nobody liked it either. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. That's weird. Like, sometimes they're super out there ones and they really work and you're like, wow, that was really like smart to think of that. Like that album with uh Thou and Emma Ruth Rundle. That was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I guess I guess it'll work, but you know, you know, they, the hardcore bands do it a lot. You know, like yeah. two step hardcore stuff. But then, but then again, you can't really tell too much difference between all the different vocalists. You know, right? When they've got you know featuring this guy, you know, you can't really it works because they're all kind of in the same genre. So yeah. it it sort of works really well, and you know, it's sort yeah, of yeah, they do it right. They do it in or a they match it sense. well. Yeah. 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 When it's too experimental and you're switching up things a lot, it just kind of it makes me I don't know. You have no direction, right? Yeah, it feels like like the artist is just reaching for something, and and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yeah, it's different yeah. than something that they've lost, and you know, it, you know, as a musician, you know, a band needs to know when they're done, yeah. and when you, when you're when you have to pull all the stops out that don't make sense. You know, instead of writing better songs or, or you know, changing up your performance, you know, you can't just hire some washed up, you know, to try to fix things for you. And, and, and you know, big music, that's the biggest problem is bands don't know when they're done. Yeah, definitely. As sad as that sounds for, for me even, you know, I mean, if we got to the point where it's all the same crap and, no, you know, it's not good anymore, what's why keep going, you know? Right. Right, and like it, once like you it, become your your fun becomes a chore or a job, right? Like, uh, exactly. switch it up. Yeah, so, Find new so, cheese. Yeah. And some, if you're like, in, uh, I'll go ahead. Sorry. No, please go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, uh, some bands finish. Like, uh, some bands can still tour for a long time and play live, and they, that doesn't like fade for a long time. Uh, but those same bands can't make new music, and some of the reverse, where they can still make good stuff in the studio, but they sound like shit live and they have no energy. Right. You know, I think I think Slayer did it right. You know, they they put out a crazy good album and just um, we're done. You know, yeah. You know, they, they, and then they did two, uh, uh, what two tours to boot. Yep. So no. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, other bands. You know, Molly Crew and Kiss and all these bands that. You know, again, it's just about how much money. You know, can we pad? You know, for our retirement because, you know, I mean, people are going to see bands like that. Primarily because they're those bands, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, nostalgia. You know, it's not that they're any good anymore. It's just part of their childhood or whatever, whatever. The nostalgia. Situation. Yeah, yeah. It's nostalgia, and and uh, which brings me to a, a leeway and a cover bands. Um, cover uh, bands. That we, I have n- never in my wildest dreams, I would have thought that. Being in a cover band will attract more people than an original band would. Right. Because, yeah. because of the nostalgia. <laughs> you know, oh, they play 80s rock. Oh, I remember I was in high school. You know, let's go listen to them. And that's all you listen to. Now I I, I, I can't do it. And I can't I can't stand that. And and I it's it's good to us for uh in a sense that. We uh, we've all have done it and we've learned from it, you know. But at, at some point, you would I would think that you would want to just start writing your own stuff, you know. Right. Right. I mean, clearly they're weekend warriors, I guess. And, and it's a money it's a money game. So you know, as as oh, a yeah. band, we've been together. I think we've been together for all the fourteen, I believe. Mike, we've uh, we lost you again. I think I think Steve and I there have been go. together uh, since two, 2014 or twenty fifteen. All right. And um, we've basically in the whole time we've been playing, I bet you paid gigs under five hundred dollars in nine, eight years total. Wow. You know, um, a, a cover band will go to a bar and, you know, they're they're you know, for, for three sets, they're going to get four or five hundred dollars. But, you know, we play constantly and nothing, zero, not even a beer ticket. I mean, it's wow. original bands, you know, it's, you know don't get the love they deserve. I mean, the people that come out, the people that do go, it's great. We appreciate them very much, but, but it's not the, you know, the, the cover bands, you know, the majority of the people, you know, that's what they want. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. 
I think yeah. cover bands are kind of an age thing as well because I, I really don't know yeah. like uh, you know many younger people that go to cover band shows and then also there's not many younger bands that get cover bands based on them. Um, I I I, I uh, there's a spot that does like a bunch of cover bands in town, and you go in and it's just a bunch of like gills and dills and milfs and shit cougars yeah. everywhere. It's just you know what I mean. Like it's it's an age thing. I think I, I agree. You know, and we and we we're both in our fifties, and 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 you know, even we we don't want to hear that shit. You know, right? I mean, you know, I'll go. I went and saw a former band member of ours play a couple weeks ago because there was one song I wanted to hear. They did a uh, on the dark side from John Cafferty. Okay, All right. I'm gonna go check him do that out. You know, but I mean, like, I it's not like a, a regular thing for us. You know, or or even like tribute bands of bands that still exist sort of sort of blow me away because i don't get it you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah then, then why are you a trip band that's still here well i mean <laughs> case in point and, and I, i'm just gonna say it you know like uh on saturday the the, the bar was packed for a slayer show and then a, a tribute slayer show and on sunday there was 15 of us at the telekinetic yeti show that's a bummer you know yeah that's not right yeah yeah we have i have a friend uh the drummer for king um my god no no not eddie i, I forgot his name he's gonna hate me anyways <laughs> no 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 king king with a y oh. a- anyways he, he uh we started talking one time because he's a huge clutch fan and so am i and he told me that a lot of the, uh, the stoner rock genre bands will not play here in El Paso because they won't they won't go out. You know, people won't go out to go see something because it hasn't caught on here, even though it's been around since you know forever. You know, but yeah. it, it it made a uh, uh, an appearance again in the '90s. You know, with the grunge and the Right. Desert. What about like uh Dallas and whatnot? Like, you know, I, I you guys kind of had to like you know when um I listened to the album, I was like, oh man, that kind of remind me of Woe Fat a little bit, you know? And they're not uh too far from you in Dallas, you know. No, yeah, they are. <laughs> they're about nine hours. They're about nine, ten hours away from us. So a little bit too far for you. I don't know, maybe yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're huge OFAT fans, and uh, I was fortunate to uh, do some artwork for for them and for a, a t-shirt, a couple of t-shirt designs. And, That's uh, sick, dude. Yeah, oh. so I was I was real excited about that. But yeah, we we love OFAT. Yeah. yeah, they're 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 badass, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we we love El Paso. You know, it's we love it here. Uh, but gotcha. <laughs> it's, it's more of a death metal town. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because you know we have we have what is Mexico next door. Oh, um, okay. And Mexico is is huge death metal. Huge. Black oh yeah, metal, big time. So so the, the death metal shows and the black metal shows they do really really well here. Yeah. Like really really well. Mexico has an absolutely massive stoner scene as well. Um, yes. We uh, we got a dude that writes for our site who's based in Mexico City, and he he uh, he sp- only looks at uh, Mexican stoner stuff and doom stuff. Right on. Who was that we played with from Mexico? Uh, uh, the Three Wheeler Band. Three Wheeler Band. Oh yeah, yeah, we've covered them. They're cool. A uh, really cool band. Yeah, they're really cool dudes, and 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 they have that really cool uh, rock and roll. Uh, straight desert. Straight, right straight desert rock. Yeah. And roll. Yep. So, yeah, they're good. they're awesome. I yeah. played with them in Boston. Austin. Oh, cool! Yeah, nice guys. It, it was Boston was very good to us, and uh, we can't wait to go back. You know, hopefully we'll get to go a little bit further east, but you know, of course, financial constraints, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, right? Uh, so, well, I mean, the, the the CD just barely came out, and it it is a new project, and so we're barely starting to push it, and uh, and you see where it goes from 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 here, right? Actually, I almost forgot to mention this. So, three wheeler, we're actually sponsoring a uh, a, a metal show in Mexico. Uh, three wheeler bands, one of, the, one of the, yeah, one of the headliners. Right on. Yeah, it's uh, 
Command Chet, Three Wheeler Band, Desert Mantra, and Moonwatcher. Uh, it's called Stone Edge Desert Caravan is the, the gig. Uh, oh, right. And that's, it, that's in Mexico City? Uh, it's in Tabaco, uh, Tabacalera. But we never even heard of that town before. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's going to be on September 9th. Uh, so it's got a bunch of cool dudes. It's uh, Fuzzland, the, the Mexican blog, and uh, I think it's Molder Brains. It's a new Mexican record label. They're the, the ones uh, organizing it. Oh, okay. Right That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we try whenever we can to like chuck some money behind sponsoring stuff like that. So we had one uh, the last month or the month before where we sponsored a Stone of Doom show in um, Brazil as well. Yep. Oh. And where are you? Where are you guys out of? San Diego for me. And Diego. I'm in uh, Connecticut. Connecticut. Wow. My old, my old man's I'm from a... Boston. So he... oh yeah, yeah. I got a little closer to you. Yeah, I'm about uh, an hour and a half drive from Boston. Very cool. Well, there was some. There was a band we played with from San Diego that was asking us to go over there and play. Who was that? Green Druid. Uh, play Boston. No, no, San Diego. San Diego. It's been a while. You know, there's so many bands we play with, but somebody from San Diego, some stoner band from San Diego. Um, Great Electric Green Quest. Druid. Oh no, Green Druid's uh, Denver. I think it was Great Electric Quest. Then maybe. Let's see, I actually don't know them. If, maybe if no. they are from here, I need to check them out. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, there you yeah, go. No, I, quest. I actually haven't. Yeah, I feel bad now. I need to see them live. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're kind of a stoner jam band, I guess cool. is how I would describe it. You know, they're they're very, really cool. Very seventies. Yeah. Okay, I love that yeah. stuff. I'm I'm super into like seventies psych and stoner rock and stuff. Oh, there you go. You you like these guys, man. Oh yeah, us too. You know, we listen to like Dust and Sir Lord Baltimore and Nice. Cactus. 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 Yeah. Hell yeah. Cactus. Yes. Hell yeah. cactus. <laughs> Orangutan. Did you ever get nice. into uh, Far Flung? Who? Far Flung. Far Flung. I don't think I've heard that. No, I, mean, That's I, a... I love that stuff, but I'm also like massively into like Floyd and Jethro Tell and like oh, yeah. uh, traffic, you know, all that like, pro- like prog psychedelic rock stuff. Yeah. Uh-oh. We, we used to do a uh, uh, locomotive breath. But oh, nice. Wasp's version of Locomotive Breath, which I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Who, sorry? Wasp does a version of, of Locomotive Breath. I have not heard that. I need to check and that out. We we used to do that in the other band. We'd play that song every once in a while, you know. Huh. Uh, as a back pocket cover in case we needed an extra song here or there, you know. It's, it's an interesting version. I mean, of course, you cannot um, even begin to compare it, you know, in any way, shape or form. Yeah, because I'm also a huge Jethro Tull fan. But yes, what's you know. uh, what's your uh, actually? I was, gonna, I was gonna say what's your favorite album, but I, I'll ask this instead because not pe- people don't seem to know this one. Do you like Broadsword? Yes, good. Like I know so many people that say they love Jethro Tull, and I ask them that, and they're like I haven't heard that album. You know, you know, I even I even like like Farm. What is that song called? Farm is a Freeway. Uh, came out in the nineties. Uh, hey, do, do you know they released an album this year? Yes. Yeah, I have I was, not heard, it, but, but it, well, it's yes. not, it's actually not bad. Really? Um, but, but the the classic band that came back this year hard that, that absolutely deserves to be listened to, uh, the new Yes album is yes! phenomenal. Wow, wow, yeah, re- really, 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 really good. They got a new vocalist who brought like a whole wow. new energy to the band. Um, yeah, and check it's it out. still like, like a yes. nice, like long, drawn out, like you know, like ballad songs that they do. You know, like it's yeah, good. Okay. We we also listen to a lot of UFO. Nice underrated yeah. band. Yeah, dude, we used to love do, UFO. We used to rock, bottom. rock bottom was one of our songs we used to like to play once in a while. You know, uh, nice from them, and you know. So again, there's so many influences, and there's so many movies. You know that that also influence us. You know what I mean? Uh, just there's just so many things. One thing we we don't write about politics. Mm-hmm much more or less we kind of more you know more more about well steve writes about a lot of weed but uh, <laughs> uh you know for me you're, myself and our bass player we're obsessed with the exorcist nice you know, we're 70s kids you know so so you know that's that's our holy grail and we are we're always talking about all right we're going to put an entire ep out and every song is going to be a scene from the exorcist you know please do that <laughs> no, I, I love that movie. 
we it would be so much fun, you know. And and we were talking about the new one coming out. And yeah, have you seen the trailer for that yet? I just saw it recently. So and and I, I read a little bit about it. And Linda Blair was a uh, technical advisor oh, cool. uh, for the two, for the two little girls that are in the movie. What do you what do you think of the trailer? I, I like I'm optimistic and being hopeful, but I don't know how it's going to be. I I would say cautiously optimistic. Yeah, because exactly. It's 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 hard to, you know. I mean, I'm going to just say this. How do you top perfection? I mean, right. You know, I've been no, listening to a podcast. If you if you're really into the Exorcist, there's a podcast called The Exorcist Minute. Huh. Okay. And, and they basically have an hour long show for every sixty seconds of the movie. <laughs> wow, breaking apart. It's pretty cool. That's interesting. Have you? Uh, did you watch the show? I actually thought the show was pretty well done. I liked it. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. pretty good. Season one was better than season two. I thought, but uh, it was it was actually captured a lot of the original sort of like uh, I don't know essence. Yes, I agree. I, I agree. You know, there's another show that I, I, I Steve turned me on to, and I'm hoping one day he'll write some songs about it. But there was a, a TV show called Thirty Coins. Okay. Made in made in Spain, um, and it has to do with you know whoever gets the thirty coins from Judas Iscariot or whoever it was you know has the power for the world or whatever. It's kind of a cool devil, you know, versus evil versus good kind of thing, which would make really good, really good song lyrics. So, That's awesome. Yeah, it yeah. Everyone. I'm a massive massive horror nut, so um, we've we're hopefully getting the dude who hosts the. Uh, horror wolf podcast if you had know that one mm. i've heard of it yes uh he's hopefully coming on our show early next month so we should have a, we're gonna do like oh no september sorry early september so we should yeah. have a, a fully horror dedicated episode discussing classics and new stuff wow yeah i gotta do a lot of brush up yeah on movies. yeah i, I i'm pretty up to date because i i have like shutter and everything and i watch all the like uh, art house and indie stuff and yeah yeah i, uh, yeah, I do we try to watch everything we can. Do you have yeah. Shutter? We watch everything we can because you never know, you know. Uh, it's it, uh, just like we we're talking about bands like us, you know, no money, no backing, you know. Same with a movie, you know. Uh, yeah, you got to give it a shot, man. And sometimes they're kick ass. It's art, right? Exactly. That's what you appreciate. I hate the the snobbery that horror movies get. It's the exact same thing that metal gets from a lot of other genres. It's that whole. Well, these guys are dumb and they like violence and you know, like that. It's it's completely no. It's just because you're afraid of feelings. <laughs> over, no, it's, it's such an oversimplification. There's so much complexity in a lot of horrors. It's like, yeah, people just don't want to dig into it. They don't want to give it the time to actually realize that. And it's they it's stupid. Get over the imagery and then that's it. They don't even want to give it a shot. Yeah, but like there's so many there's so many horrors I've seen that are so intelligent. Yes. Well, people think like metal. You well, if you have talent, you're not going to sing like that. Yeah, or if right. you have talent, you're not going to play that kind of music. Right. Um, I think it's the same thing that goes for that. The the elitist mentality that if it's not mainstream or it's not, right? You know, you know Nick why Nick. if it's not if it's not, if it's not at Cinemark and it's not on the radio, then it's probably not worth watching. You know, right. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, sometimes like uh, people in professional settings are surprised that I'm so into metal and horror and stuff, and they're like, "But you like." You work in marketing. I'm like, yeah. What does that have to do no. with anything exactly. at all? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> well, I get it all the time. You're a teacher. Are you serious? Like for real? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm a t- yeah, yeah, right. kids all day, every day. I mean, that's what I do. And and right. obsessed with metal and horror. That's just the way it is. I mean, if you know, we all of us are the same. You know, we just. You know, I, I one time I dated a girl that said, "Why do you have such a um, uh, uh, fascination with the abomination?" You know, and uh, I kind of thought about that for a minute, and I thought, "Well, I don't know, but it's cool." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, it's I don't know. It just there's something about it that that draws. I mean, it's not everyone, and I understand that, but certain people are drawn to that side of the world and that side of life. I think. Yeah, I think so. You know, which is cool about metal because. You know, we can we can we can write about this stuff and and we're not going to go do it. You know, we're going to go to work and we're going to pay our taxes and we're going to do all the things that we need to do. But we can sit here and write about, you know, whatever we want, you know, just like, you know, Cannibal Corpse. I mean, these guys are regular dudes and, and you know, they just they 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 express themselves in the art that they have chosen, mm-hmm. which makes it OK, you know. 
Right. And, and I, I always, you, I make the comparison. I always say like, do you think that everyone who writes rap lyrics about like shooting police officers and stuff is going to do that? No, it's creative license. It's just, yeah. it's, you know, it's lyrics. It doesn't mean anything. Right. Or like, are people really rapping and like, um, like, like, com- like saying like they actually did all these things, you know what I mean? Like, are they confessing crimes? Like, right. Come on. Yeah, no, it's, it's entertainment, man. You know, yeah, right. Like, it's all entertainment. We, like, we we like the imagery, and we you know we like to write and get lyrics and ideas from horror films, and it's just you know it, it's right. just for fun, man. It's I, to listen to and have fun, and like you know, like or watch whatever it is, you know. But it, right. it's just like I always felt like if you don't like it, then just don't watch it or listen. Like well, that's not hard. The- if everyone in the world applied that logic, we'd have a, a much better planet. Um, right, right. Yeah. Uh, just uh, we are coming up in times, uh, so we have a couple of questions we still want to ask, Brendan. I know you always love to ask about like uh, local bands, local food, and local venues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I was gonna ask you guys, uh, what was your uh, favorite local venue to play at, and uh, good experience there? Well, it has to be uh, the Rock House here in El Paso. Um, they they've always treated us really well, and uh, they have a, an incredible professional stage and light uh, show. And uh, they've you know they're 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 fellas that that we've known for a very long time that that have supported the scene, whether it be in playing in bands or having different venues for, for a while. But this 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 one is special, and and a, a lot of the the touring bands are stopping here for that reason because of the rock house and and we just enjoy everybody there and you know that's our i would say that's my favorite spot and, and may I add one thing to that we have one of the best sound guys in the world uh who is the guy who who did our album for us his name is hector camarena and he's 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 a he's he's just a badass uh, and we love him and when he does sound for us there it's even better hell yeah um what has been your uh, favorite city to visit? As a band? Out, as a band, yeah, yeah. Outside of El Paso. You know, we're going to we're gonna have to say Austin. We played at some stoner fest out there that uh, we had a, a really a great time meeting new other Texas stoner bands. Yeah. But this was when we were with uh, with Brother Strange. Yeah. Um, we, like I said, Ojomalo is still fairly, fairly new as far as touring way. So we haven't been much out as far as uh, maybe New Mexico and Arizona, just around here. Some something that we can get to yeah. and come back. Yeah, Austin was because people, you know, during during the songs, they're not getting beers; they, they were listening. Yeah, and so we had a good reception. Like a concert, you know, you know, like everybody waits till. Till the band finishes to go to the restroom or or to get a beer, and we noticed yeah. that right, we noticed that in Austin, and we're like, man, this is badass. They the even if you're playing at a hole in a wall bar, they the people there treat you like you're you know you're you know on a huge stage. Yeah, I man. assume like, that was like, like common like, common courtesy. I, I do that every day. Right. I see. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, you you paid a cover charge to get in, maybe, or you know, I mean, you're there to like support, man. Like, if you're like, I don't know, you gotta be in the moment, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's your favorite song to play live? Ooh, Steve. I think uh, Black Trip Lord is is probably the 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 one that um. Uh, that I like it's it's it has a, a a groove that I like uh you know to perform and kind of you know bounce my head to. Um, I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah, it's even better live. Just saying. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got to get down there. My uh my dad. Or we gotta get up there. Conroe, Texas. I don't know how far that is from you guys, but. Yeah, very far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are we are on the border. We're on the border of New Mexico and Mexico. We're at the very tip of Texas. It's a wild gotcha. place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're only eight hours from San Diego. So yeah. yeah. San Diego. 
Yeah, that's the easy way. Yeah, if you guys come through, let me know. I'll be there. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely get out to the East Coast. Definitely let me know for sure. Um, would you guys uh, play live music at a rodeo? Because <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, we, 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 we're going to be doing a, a roller derby. Roller derby. That's yeah. kind of like a rodeo, right? All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, we're, we're still playing in Texas. We, we, we that's, like a rodeo. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Now, nah, um, James, I'm good to go. Cool. I got a couple. I got like three more for you guys. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk food real quick. If we come to visit your city, what should we eat and where should we get it? I should have asked that too, yeah. It's <laughs> okay. God, you know, first off, it'll be a hole in the wall. Yes. No yes. doubt. My, my no vote would be that. for a place called Ernesto's in Anthony, New Mexico. Tiny yeah. little place closes at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and amazing Mexican food. Uh, oh, amazing. Steve? I like all of them. <laughs> we have the on Earth in El Paso. I, I will. I will agree with that. You know, we do have the best Mexican food. Even I'm gonna, gonna have to compare ahead. it. I said I have yeah. to compare it to San Diego because we're we're right on the border too. We got some amazing stuff here as yeah, well. It's, oh, it's, it's different, bro. It's it's different. Yeah, because ours is Juarez style. It's like. Juarez, Juarez has their own kind of way of doing everything. Right, so it right. So tastes a little different. Right, you we know? have a lot of the Baja style here, which is right, the seafood. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we have zero. Yeah, we have zero Baja. Yeah. Interesting. I'd love to try that style. Yeah. What would you recommend out of your your uh, out of there? Out of where? Food wise, you mean? Oh, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, well, do you like uh, tongue? I've had uh, tongue taco. Yeah. Okay, so they have delicious lengua there. They have really good mole. I love, I love mole. mole. Mole, okay. anything. I okay. fucking it's what it's always one of my go to, and uh, it's one of my favorite like enchilada. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And molada. So yeah, the, the the those are both really good here. Barbacoa is great. So yeah. Now you know what? Anything you ordered, you'd be happy with. I bet. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Cool. Um, okay, so what are some local bands that we should check out? Like anyone that doesn't get enough love that we should be listening to? Uh, there's there's a band uh, from Las Cruces that are good friends of ours. Las Cruces, New Mexico, is literally like 35 minutes away from our house here. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're 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 a uh, stoner rock. Uh, they're called Shalem. Not only not only are are they are their songs unique and catchy uh, and, and you can tell the difference of the songs, but they're also very nice guys. And, 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 and believe it or not, that makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Shalem. S H A L E M. There's another one here. They're more metal, like more traditional. They're called Death Gravity. Okay. Uh, pretty cool guys. They have two guitar players, no bass player. Um, but it, it's 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 a good live show, and they've got really good music, you know. But the reality is, I would say none of the local bands get enough love. Yeah. None of us. So yeah, that 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 question's hard because you know, none of us do. You know, I mean, we we put our hearts into everything we do, and it doesn't matter to us. We'll play it for the for the budget, or that's it. We don't care. Right. We do what we do, and it's the same. You know, well, it's not the same, but I mean, we we put the same effort into it. No matter who's there, so. that's awesome. I mean, that's what you want to see. That's uh, yeah. that way. No matter you know, that that makes people want to come see you because they've seen you before. And like every time I see these guys, they're killer. Yep. Yep. There's, there's, def there's, def there's definitely a couple of local bands here where I'll, I'll make sure I go to the shows if I see that they're opening type thing. I'm like, okay, they're there, sweet. I'll, I'll go to that. Um, last question, and this one's going to put you on the spot a little bit. Uh, so, if you were trapped on a desert island. With a solar powered discman, and you could only have three CDs to listen to until you got rescued, what would they be? You're each allowed three. Can it be live greatest hits albums? That's fine. Okay, well, definitely the 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 Beatles uh, blue 
well, greatest hits one uh, with all with all their I mean the red one with all the psychedelic uh, uh, songs on there. Um, I'm gonna say Unleashed in the East from Judas Priest, nice. just because just because it brings back so many memories of of you know what we were talking about nostalgia mm -hmm. and probably science from sleep okay yeah. nice science is, yeah I think for me it would be kiss alive uh, okay first one the second one british steel nice classic sure. um and then probably slayer show no mercy nice that would probably be my three because I'd never get tired of any of those albums in any way, shape, or form. Awesome. You guys are pretty quick. Like uh, we asked that some people really need time and some people just like boom, 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 like three three yeah. hours in a row. So yeah. well, I went second, you know, to be fair, I went second, so I had a minute to think about it. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and for me, that always my answer, like there's always one or two that stay the same, but the third one seems to change a lot of the time when I answer it, because like it depends what mood I'm in. But uh, right. I think that's, that's pretty true. common. Hey, ask me this question next week and it's going to change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So last thing before we go, um, if anyone wants to follow the band, listen to or buy your music or show support in any way, uh, what are the best places to do that? Most of our shows are posted on our on our Facebook. Oh, merchandise. Oh, uh, just right now we're just doing the live shows uh, merchandise wise. <laughs> Um, but, uh, the, the live, I mean, the album is in, on all ma major, uh, music platforms, um, cool. where we're working on, on getting the actual physical, uh, CDs. Uh, we were, we were debating, Hey, you know, not too many people still buy CDs, but our genre does. Yeah, Definitely. You know what I mean? So we're like, okay, at first we're like, no, let's just get a whole bunch of, let's spend three, let's spend money on hiring David Paul Seymour yeah. and, and get his artwork on one of our t-shirts. Um, or we can use that money to order physical CDs. So we're still waiting on the, on the physical CDs to come in. For now, bad camp, you know, of course. Spotify, Amazon, Pandora, YouTube. We have a do YouTube have a channel, channel. Some live stuff on. And then, if people want to follow the band, it's Facebook and Instagram, right? Correct. Uh -huh. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was really great chatting to you guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, man, it was a blast, brother. Uh, yeah, and I, you guys obviously have some stuff coming in the future. I know there's a, a new EP in the works right now, and some other stuff coming. So, if you ever want to come back on, you're more than welcome. Thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you. it. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Thanks for everyone, everyone listening at home, thank you so much for tuning in. Come back next week. We'll have another guest for you.